it'll just make it easier for me with a uh, group of people this size uh, to uh, keep things yes, going. So I, I gave you a handout, a little login for my domain. Uh, Google provides a Google certified trainers with sandbox domains. Mine is amtechnology.org where I have all my training materials and all my, uh, all my students. And I have classrooms set up there. So today I'll be showing you a round classroom and some different things you can do with it. And you're more than welcome to log into the domain. I'll show you how to join the class. And as I do a few things, um, you can actually complete the assignments and pass them in. You don't have to, though. Uh, a lot of people just like to sit back and watch, and that is fine. I actually will be demoing everything on the screen, so you can just sit with your hands in your lap and enjoy that as well. So it just gives you a choice. If you like to be busy and you're up for the challenge, uh, by all means, uh, use the login. When we get to that point, I'll give you a little brief instruction on how to log in if you don't know how. For those of you that know what incognito is, you really should use incognito, whether you're using Chrome or Firefox uh, for this account, unless you wanted to set up your own Chrome account. If you want to log in as this person, just to give you a heads up, you would go to the right-hand side of your browser, and Firefox is really good at copying Chrome, so now it looks like Chrome. So if you click on it, you'll see new incognito window. And when that opens up, if you just type in classroom.google.com, it will prompt you. I'm not I spelled it wrong. It'll prompt you to log in and then you'll be in classroom. So you would log in using that. I'll try that. So classroom.google.com. You don't have to do anything now. It'll just be available to you when I show you some of the assignments. But you can see that this person, this student's logged in. And I'm going to give you a code to join my person I call it classroom. And there are a number of fun things to do in my classroom, at, which I'll explain in great detail. Because the focus of today is not how to use Google Classroom, but what Google provides as a paperless classroom solution. And Classroom is part of that. If you, what did you do? Catch me, I'm using a bleed, right? You were looking guilty, so and she was shuffling, so. I was like, which, oh, did you unplug the projector? She unplugged the projector. I'm glad I started early. Treasuretrovegap.com. It's right here on the screen. 
And up at the top, there are several links. One, there's a link to Google Classroom. So that's the link to today's resource, I guess you would say. It's really more of a hands-on demo, so um, you got to be here. Before I get started, I just wanted to use this opportunity to share uh, an opportunity for others to help those in need. We have a New Hampshire teacher who lost a uh, family, actually, who lost their home to a fire this past fall and their two dogs. And every chance I get, um, they have a small goal to raise some money to help, help them get through this. And that would be for the Hayes family. So I have a link to their fund site, a GoFundMe or FundMe site. And if you would like to help them out, that would be awesome, or even just send your well wishes. I hope you don't mind that I'm, I'm promoting that here. But in return for that request, uh, I've written a course that's being sold on accidents for a classroom. So if you came today because you wanted a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use classroom, I don't have that prepared for you. But what I do have is a set of videos in the form of a course that if you go to that and just use this discount code, AXCLASS14, you'll get a 100% discount and you can use it um, at your own pace. If you have signed in here, that's great. I'm going to show you in the classroom how I use the same sign-in there as well. But I do have a sign-in, and part of that is my segue into the Google Classroom and the paperless environment. I use Google Forms for everything, but always when I train. When I'm working with students, I use Google Forms to find out what they like, what they don't like, uh, what they're good at. How do they feel about that uh, activity we just did? And I use it all the time as a sign-in sheet because by collecting the email addresses and first and last names of my audience, there's dozens of other things I can do with Google tools. So what you see here is a, a link to just a simple, what's called a Google form, where I ask first and last name, what session you are attending, on, on this topic, how would you rate your ability and what are you hoping to learn? You could get more intricate and more detailed with your questions if you had more time to analyze what you get back. This is the outside or the public view of a form. And then the results come in here. So for those that came in and looked up and they said, oh, there's the sign in. They've already signed in. I've got the email addresses. As a sidebar, just so you know, as teachers and administrators, you can now do an email merge from this. So if you had a sign in for your open house and you wanted to send a personalized message to all the parents that attended, you could simply click on an add-on called Just Another Mail, Yet Another Mail Merge, and you can create a personalized email address even include fields in the email address, and they don't see that the email went to 100 people. They just see that it went to, Dear Nancy, thank you for visiting Open House. As we discussed, your daughter, Kyle, is doing very well, or needs to get additional support in math. So that's just a sidebar from the form. It's an add-on called Yet Another Mail Merge. The other thing I get in the form as part of, part of my paperless classroom is the ability to quickly look at the summary of responses. So if I need to learn something about my students on the fly, on this topic, how would you rate your ability, expert being five, no clue being number one, I have a wide range of learners in my audience. But there have been times where I've been asked to teach a group of experts in Google Apps, a really advanced group, and I survey them and they tell me they're at ground zero. So Google Forms can be really helpful to help analyze the needs of your student base. And that's just a sidebar introduction. I'll start out with the uh, presentation now. I lost my own website.
Now I do have a, a slideshow prepared, but I don't, I won't stick with it. I'll just do a quick intro with it, and then we'll get right into the classroom. The reason I call it Drive Into the Clouds with Google's Paperless Classroom is I feel that Classroom is a great tool, but it serves more as a, a hub-like solution for many of the obstacles that we have faced using Google as, as a product in our classrooms. Um, when Classroom first came out, uh, there was a lot of chatter about, well, it doesn't do, it doesn't connect with my gradebook, and it doesn't work like an LMS, and it's not intended to do any of those things. There are very specific goals of, of Classroom. Um, at Google actually did everything on purpose and continues to move forward in that direction. So Google Classroom came out last winter. They did a beta, and we did uh, we, we did a rollout, a full rollout in. Uh, it was August, and the minute it rolled out to the world, there was so much feedback. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Here's where it started. Google knew that educators love Google tools, especially being able to share and collaborate in the cloud. But we've known for years that it can be very chaotic, that teachers were getting hundreds and hundreds of documents shared with them, and they had no easy way to organize it. And people like me would go and do sessions on these scripts called G-Class folders and, and Dr. Puss, which are great, but the average teacher didn't have time to learn and understand and manage those tools. And so Google recognized that they needed to put something into place to help teachers create and organize the assignments, get them out to the students, but also be able to get the feedback to the students immediately. The most powerful thing about Google Docs is feedback, it's relationships, it's communication. It's not even about software at all. And I see this happen with my virtual students all the time. Because before they were using Word and passing in Word Docs to me, and then I said, this, is, this doesn't make sense. Do you have a Gmail account? Yeah. Have you used Google Drive? Oh yeah, we have that at my school. My break. Okay. You can do anything you want for me in a Google Doc. I can? Yeah. Great. Now I just tell the kids, do all your work in Google Docs. My school um, is unique in the sense that we, we have students from all over coming into the Virtual Learning Academy, so we didn't have student accounts when I first started. And yet, the kids were way ahead of the curve. But the, the beauty of that is, a student from way up north can submit a doc, share it with me, I get an email alert, and instantly I'm in the document with the student. And they're like working away, and then I'm giving feedback, and then they're working harder and faster, and by the time they get done with whatever product they were working on, it's finished, it's 100%. So there's no more, give me a word doc, oh, how am I gonna get feedback? You get it back and forth. There's one version, we're working on it in full time. Classroom just makes that easy and instant. And there's also a communication tool in Classroom where you can, you can be the announcer to the class all the time, or you can have it uh, work as a, like a social feed where students can comment on anything you post in the classroom. These are the key things that the teachers say they like best about Classroom. It takes seconds to set it up. So if you are, are limited in scope and time for what you can do to teach teachers how to use tools, Classroom is a piece of cake. It's a 10 minute deal. All the files are automatically shared. The shares are done in Classroom. The minute you push a doc out, it's shared with you and the student. The minute they turn in a doc that they hadn't shared with you, it's shared with you. So they don't have to remember to share with you before they turn it in. By the process of turning it in through Classroom, it's shared with you. You can get into a doc the minute they're working on it. So 25 kids in your classroom can all be working on a writing prompt. And as the teacher, you can have those 25 docs open while they're working, hopping doc to doc, putting in comments and giving feedback. You can push out templates that go out to each student. What I love to do is to put all the directions for the assignment on the doc, push it out, and I say just replace the instructions as I can the work. One doc, one assignment. The actual assignment sheet turns into their finished product. 
And instantly you'll see in classroom, you can see like that, how many people have not or have turned their work in. So when classroom came out, I was asked this question all the time. What does classroom replace? I don't think it replaces anything. One thing I can think of, assignment collector. But every other tool becomes easier to use and more manageable and more valuable in that hub. The kids who are just in a hangout on air I did uh, from Burlington were in there, and they love it because it saves them time. And those kids are happy to do that homework, and they're happy to do their schoolwork, but they want it done efficiently. And I know from working in technology for over 15 years in education that that majority of the time using technology meant more effort, more confusion, more hurdles. It wasn't making it easier for the students. The students have over the years become turned off to using technology for educational purposes. Because when you use it at school, well, it's not fun, it's not doing anything that they really like to do, but when they do use it, it's difficult, clunky. They love classroom. And if you, if you go to a school where one or two teachers have started using classroom, the kids will say, oh, we gotta get Mrs. Smith using classroom, and we've gotta get, they wanna spread the word because they love it so much. Uh, the kids have the ability to unsubmit and resubmit work, which puts the power in the student's hand, which is really nice. Um, the, the, the teacher can't keep a student from doing better. That's one of the things I love about it. I've actually had people ask me, well, how can I lock them out of their own work? I'm like, well, why would you want to do that? Well, if they pass it in, what if they want to like add something to it or make it better? <laughs> and you want to prevent that. Okay. Um, but you can timestamp it. So I get that you want to have a snapshot of what happened initially, and maybe the repetitive efforts, that's okay. Um, you can timestamp that. So as they are unsubmit their work and revise and pass it in, you see that has happened, and you can also use the revision history to see what they've changed. That's really nice. My students, my virtual students, use this all the time. Now they can annotate what they give it in. So there's a place to submit, and then a comment below it. So maybe, maybe their table is messed up, but they need you to clarify five things. They can write that and annotate it. I love it when my students write, I hope you like this, I worked countless hours. I'm like, so I'm pressured now. <laughs> it has to be good. This is just a little snapshot of how I view classroom with sites. Uh, this is the icon for sites, calendar, uh, forms, YouTube. YouTube is a Google product, and you have a YouTube account associated with your Google login where you can curate and make playlists for your um, curriculum. But you can also use tools like Snagit to create screencasts and post them to your YouTube channel and then put them in Classroom. So Classroom is the hub of all of these Google tools. Um, I wanted to watch this just in case you're not familiar with the whole process. Hopefully the sound's okay. Don't worry about the sound unless it's too loud. This walks you through how, to, how Classroom works in a nutshell. <coughs>
that's just um, I'm not going to play that video. I show that because it summarizes everything much quicker than I could. could. I always rant on and get off on tangents. Um, here's something that's really just kind of good to know and an interesting thing I learned today is that um, the first time you go to classroom.google.com, which you will do it, or have done already um, with the login I gave you, is that you, you select whether you're a student or a teacher. If students select that they're a teacher, it just means they can create classes. And I've had some people say, well, how can we make that not happen? But then on the other hand, we have schools like Burlington High School whose students are making classes to learn how to code with each other. So there are opportunities there for students to be able to make classrooms. Um, if you log in and you say you're a student, you won't see the option to create a class. That can always be changed in the admin panel on request. So if you're an administrator, if you're a teacher, and you accidentally are a student and you can't create a class, just contact your admin and that can easily be fixed. So just another quick sidebar, these things about the paperless classroom. I showed you the add-on in Sheets. I know this is paper. Mm -hmm. Contradicting myself. But I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that in Docs, there's also the thing called add-ons. And I made these with the A grade label merge. So I put a spreadsheet together with the name and the, and the login information, and then just connected it by add-ons. And then it created, did the mail merge. So if you're uh, wondering about how do you use mail merge in Google Docs, that's a good tool. This is the dashboard of Classroom. And you get these cards built up based on the number of classes that you either are a teacher of or a student of. So I am a student to a few classes. Um, you can't co-teach classroom right now. So in uh, a school where I co-teach a project with a teacher, he's added me as a student, and that's all I needed. And if I need to do anything uh, administratively, I have to log in as him. But you can be a student and a teacher in a classroom, in different classrooms. Now I'm going to go ahead and, um, oh, before I do that, in terms of, I'm going to go through the whole process of creating the classroom and <coughs> logging in. The students, this comes up a lot. How do I get my students in my classroom? Well, you can add them manually by your directory because when you click on students in classroom, <coughs> your directory is available. So anyone in your domain, you can search for by name or check off a list. And now, if you have groups set up in your admin panel, you can add groups of students as well. However, I find the simplest approach is just to give them the code. And I have worked with students joining classroom as young as kindergarten age who are perfectly capable of getting to classroom and typing the code. So that's the, the approach we're going to take today. Now, let me just walk you through uh, how does one join this classroom? So you're my students, and those of you who uh, have your card here today, welcome to class. Thanks for coming. If you came in late and you want to log in, you can step right up and grab one. Uh, won't bother me at all. I'm going to take one I haven't used and demo how this is done. So if you're students, so if your students have never logged in, this is how what will happen. First, what I, what I had suggested to you is that you log in uh, to an incognito window. And I'm actually log, already logged into an incognito window. So I'm going to open Firefox uh, just so I'm totally separate and can show you a, a clean experience. That is another way to get out of any account you're logged into. So the first thing I recommend is that you go to classroom.google.com. For teacher or student, that's the first step. Now, you're not logging in. It should go right to a Google login on, a, on the phone browser.
oh, I'm not going to belabor that. Now I have to. I'm going to go here. All right, when you, when you first go to classroom.google.com, it's going to prompt you to log in. So you log in with the credentials I gave you. So if you're a free to four, you're F4 at amtechnology.org, and your password is CMTC2014. If you successfully have logged in, you will see nothing because you don't have any classes. But you do have the ability to join a class. And remember what I said, when you go to classroom.google.com for the first time, for this purpose, be a teacher. And then if you want to use this login to practice making classes, you can. It doesn't matter what you selected. I just, if you're not going to have students making classes, just tell them to, to be a student and just call it a day. Here is a classroom that I have joined. So once you join a class, you will have this here. You just click on join class, and I'm going to put up the class code right now. It's PPLY25D. 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 And we're going to go into the classroom. I'm going to give you a moment. Now I'm going to change my view over to classroom. First is a teacher. This is a student view. This is the teacher view. So for those of you who aren't logging in that are just watching, uh, PPLY25D, uh, classroom.google.com. Oh, you need a slip. I need a slip. You have to come and get it. <laughs> All right. Um, you want to you want to count to log in with? Okay. Oh, you're out. Here you can be free to didn't work out so well for me. Okay. All right. So here, just uh, if you're looking, um, either logged in as a student or not, just take a look up here and let me point out some highlights and things you need to know about classroom. First is this here is the main menu. And when you click on this, any of the classes that you belong to are here. But there's also now a little gear down here called settings. And if you would like to change your profile picture from the blue shadow to something else, you can. Um, you can also turn off notifications. Because if you use the uh, notifications are turned on, you're going to get a lot of mail notifications if you use the screen. So those are just two things that came in recently uh, that I wanted to point out. The second thing is, when you see this view here, I've got all the classes that I belong to, and then these are all the upcoming assignments. So the assignments that are generally, I believe, within the next seven days due. This is what the students say they love about the classroom. If, if everyone's using it, or if they know one teacher's using it really well, that it just makes it easy for them to see um, what's coming up. Now if you click on the classroom, as the teacher, I can see how many students have joined my class. I click on students here, and I have quite a few of you in the classroom already. So don't you think that was probably the easiest way for me to set up my classroom? Um, so then you're good to go. The code is here if you need it again, and you can reset it or disable it at any time. So if you're full and you don't want anyone to mistakenly or accidentally join your class, you can uh, disable the join code. So when you create your classroom, that's just there as this random code for you? Yeah, and you can change it if you want to. Um, this is where you can moderate the comment stream. So if you have been a classroom user and you haven't heard the greatest news, that you now have choices on how the comment stream works. It's basically a, a way that you can post information or even have a conversation. So you can say students can post and comment, or how about you're just going to do the post, but you want students to be able to comment. You have that option as well. Or only the teacher can post or comment. So maybe you just want to use it to post homework, and you're not going to use it for discussion. This was not a feature that it came with. It's a new feature. It's based on the feedback button. If you use Classroom and you see something you need, you don't like, down in the bottom corner here, there's the send feedback button, and 
they use this. This is not the black hole. These guys are building classroom based on what teachers want, which is how it was built from the, from the beginning. A minimalist approach, delivering the tools that teachers want in a way they want to use them. So if you click on send feedback here, you can now highlight, you can say, I, I would like to, you know, something I'd like to do, da 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 da, da I'm looking at feedback. But then when you click on next, it gives you an opportunity to highlight the area that you want to address. So they, they not only get your feedback, but they get a highlighted snapshot of what you're suggesting. So you want to make sure you're aware of that because the features that we've gotten so far that we love are based on the feedback they've gotten from us. Um, you can take individual action on a student. So if um, I don't want Alonzo to be able to have any commenting rights anymore, I can just click here. And you hey! <laughs> I know, you didn't do anything yet. <laughs> but just wait. <laughs> All right, but you saw there I can also remove them from class, so if somebody is in your class that don't, no longer needs to be there, you can do that. And here's something that Classroom has replaced for me, which I think is awesome because I spent lots of time teaching teachers how to export, um, how to get a, a, a spreadsheet of their class and then import it into mail so that they would have the ability to email their kids. If you just use Classroom for this, it's worth it. So I can click here now, and email my whole class. It just whoop, opens up my email, and I'm emailing the class. Or I can email a few, or I can email one. And that used to be a big step that we had to go through to get that to happen um, for teachers to have those groups set up. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, emails here, action email. I clicked on the mail. When you want to email everyone, you click on actions email. If you want to invite, you can. Again, this is where you would add students by individual or by groups that are set up in your domain. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Um, all right, this is the main page. First of all, you can change the theme. By default, it will be an ugly purple, these ugly purple bubbles. Maybe you love purple and you think these bubbles are beautiful. I just don't. Um, so I picked a different different theme the minute I think my classroom. You can't customize it like you can with everything else yet in Google, but I'm sure that's coming down the road as well. So here you have this stream. Now, I'm just going to say this um, to put it aside before the, the question comes up. You cannot sort what you post. So I posted a, a number of things for today, but yet I would like to move them around. I cannot do that at this point. I'm not worried. I know that's coming. But what you do see here is I've pre-set up some assignments for you guys. So if you're here, I'm going to ask that you take a look at things in order. The first thing is, if you're students, um, go ahead and take a look at the About page. Because it's the first day of school, and I want to make sure that you know where all the course resources are. And they are located on this About page, another feature that was not available on the initial rollout. And here is my phone number where you can reach me between 7 and 8 p.m. Um, our room is virtual. Here is a direct link to my email address. And this is what's awesome. This is a link to the class folder for me as teacher. But when you click on it, it's going to take you to your class folder for this course. So there's your course folder right there. It's so nice because you can do everything and you're using Google Drive, but yet you're not even going into Google Drive. So for all of you that are like, oh, but I hate it, hate share it with me. Well, you can avoid Google Drive for the day. If I do click on this, I'll show you. In, it takes me directly to Google Drive. And in Google Drive, the minute you join or create a class, you have a class classroom folder. So you can see I have classroom here. And then here, I created a class for today. And if I click on it, anything that I have as the teacher is in this folder. Students have a different view because what <coughs> students will see, and I'll show you, let me grab a student, Murray. There you are. Uh, I'll show you what the folder looks like from the student's perspective. Oh, Ruthann's already saying hello. All right, if I click here as student, and this is nice because it's fresh and clean. 
here is if you come up with anything that says download drive, you always have to tell the kids too because the first time they go to drive, it'll say download drive and don't skip, you know. So all I all I do is say don't show this again. I'm going to take me to drive, and I'll close out of that, and then I'll even close out of the preview. And now you can see that this student Cheryl. Shirley has a classroom folder and the CMTC folder. Now last night I opened one assignment. So the minute you open an assignment in classroom, it makes a doc in your organizes it in your drive. And you're going to see that this folder for Shirley is going to fill up pretty quick now. <laughs> Working my way down the about page. Keep this in mind. This is a great place for your year-long resources. Now, some people have have scolded me and said, "Well, oh, 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 oh. I'm not used to points. I'm loud enough anyway, usually, but this is a kind of a wide room. Uh, I've been scolded for adding my resources individually here, but I think it looks better." So what you can do, if you're a teacher, you can click on Add Materials up here. And I want to show you this. For assignments, announcements, and here, I can upload a file. I can grab anything from Google Drive. I can put in a YouTube video. Or I can add any link off, off the web. So, and you'll get a little thumbnail next to it, whatever it is. So I like to break it up. And if you want to group links together, you could. But you give it a title. And what I would suggest is, if you have to have an external calendar, because parents have to see something, you can still have that out there, embedded on your website, linked somewhere. But it can also be linked in here. So you have your calendar. It's linked here. You have your website. Lots of teachers are not going to give up their website. And so you can just link it right here. And I'm going to take a moment to play this for you because I think that if, if any teacher likes to be creative and is looking for a way to, to level up and engage their students, you should make a trailer for your course. Look what this guy did with his social studies in class. I'm not this clever. video in forms. 
that survey that I gave you, if you give homework and at any point want students to watch a video, let's say on D-Day or a snippet of, of something on a science concept or math, you put the video in the form and then you put the questions below the video asking them some clarifying things that they wouldn't know the answer to if they hadn't watched the video. You're 90% 90, 90 more likely to get them to watch the video for homework by doing it that way. And the other thing is, in classroom, you can put these links to videos. This could stay there all year long. But you can also put them here on the stream page. You can add an announcement and then put in a video as like an icebreaker to a concept you're about to introduce and say, all right, I want you to watch this video and then answer, you know, comment on this prompt. Lots of ways you can integrate into it there. Uh, all right, back to assignments. I have this little thing where I put the uh, put my notes in a doc, try to keep me on task. Oh, I'm always behind. All right, so going down the list, I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to a few things. This is not one of them. Um, here would be an announcement. Now I have it set up so you guys in the classroom can add comments. Please add any ahas or questions in the comment stream. If you are inappropriate, I will mute you, dock you points on your project work today, call home and who knows what else <laughs> So add humor. Kids like it. And they're much less likely to be inappropriate. Um, I haven't heard of that being an issue at all. Here's a link to my form. Now some of the questions have come up, like how do I, how do I embed a form in my Google Classroom? Well, you can't embed a form, but what you can do, my notes just died. What you can do is you can put the link to the form there. So that same form that I had on my website that I asked you to sign in with is here. So if you click on it, it takes you actually, no, that's wrong. Let me go to student view. Yeah, incognito. <coughs> if you click on the link to the form here, Right? It's going to open in a new tab and you're going to complete the form. So then people are like, well, how do I, how do I have that show up in Classroom? Well, if you post it as a link, if you say new assignment and make it a link, then the student can click on the link and say they did it. So what the workaround is, is Mark is done. So you just want to know, and, and there they can add a private note to the teacher or not. That is one way to post an assignment in classroom is to post a link and say, when you've done this task, mark it as done. There's no evidence. They're not providing you with anything. That might be somewhere else. But you're just getting a general idea. Did you guys do this? So the form I use a lot. The second thing I want to draw your attention to is um, how you can push something out to a student. In this case, this student um, sees if you scroll down to assignment about me, tell us about yourself. It, if you open it up, class, um, and you open what I have given you, you'll see that I've assigned you this about me slide. And I've asked you to put in your name, and some of you might already even be, be working on these. So this is, this is an example of something I've given a copy of to each student. And I'm going to go through the process of doing it and passing it in and then showing you how I set it up. So I'm going to ask them all about it. And I'm going to insert an image here. So I'm just going to take this out. If you didn't know that the research tool is the best, in my opinion, way to grab images. So let's say I'll just use the giver as an example because it always seems to not fail me. I'm looking for an image of the giver. I change my search to images, and it comes up. I have the option now to grab what you media specialists prefer, free to use. <laughs> and there I can use that option. So just so you know, that's there. So I ask you to put in an image and something. Now you've done your assignment. Note to everyone, we're going to use a doc, and you're going to see a turn it in button. There are no turn it in buttons. If you push a spreadsheet or a slideshow out, they'll have, to, they'll have to manually pass it in. But let's say I'm done with my assignment. I'm Cheryl. 
and I'm ready to pass it in. That's all the teacher wanted. I click on turn it in, but first I'm going to add it. So I click on Google Drive, and it will look through my drive for what I want to pass in. So I go to my classroom folder. I can search by, by name if I have a lot of docs. And that's it. And if I want to say I worked hours on it, I can. And then I turn it in. Post. Now it says not done, and it's due tomorrow. So I click on turn it in. And now as the teacher, if I go down, See, look, I can see six of you guys have done this. Um, about me, four are done, really? Wow, you guys are fast. So if I go here now as a teacher and look at this assignment, it tells me that uh, Alonzo has passed this in. Uh, and I'm not going to look at this right now because I want to show you something, what I'm going to do. I have a method to my madness here. So for those of you who have completed your assignment, Scroll on down to the next assignment that says about us. Add your about me slide here. So what I have done as the teacher with this assignment, I sent the, the Google slide out and each student got a copy. In this instance, I sent this out as edit by all. So if I click on this as the student, go to student. <coughs> Bear with me. So I have this slideshow that I started, and I just, I gave everyone their individual assignment. I said, go ahead and produce a slide. Now this slide could be about us. You can do it as an icebreaker, teach them how to do Google Slides. But then you can set kids off into groups or individuals to research topics and then bring it in as one slideshow. So all you have to do as a student now is click on Insert, Import Slides, and I recommend you do this with your kids and even your staff. It is a great way to learn a technology tool, to learn how to use Google Slideshow, and uh, get to know each other. Um, a couple bullets about yourself and a picture. I have so many of them, uh, collections of slideshows from people all over the world, and it's really great. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't recommend doing it enough. So all you have to do is click on Import Slide, and I've already got some new slides in here. Nona! She is a librarian and likes to read. What a surprise. <laughs> That's great. So you can see this comes together very quickly. You can do this with a small, small group or a large group of people. VLAX, the school I work for, I see my, my teachers once a year. Um, we started one of these and we update it every year now. Right before our annual conference, the human resources um, director says, hey, um, go in and update your slideshow. And so it's just fantastic. So anyway, this little simple about us. That's why I included it in the Google Classroom um, for this presentation is because I think it's a fun thing to do and there's a lot of things it's easy to do using Google Classroom. Now let me just show you how that happened. I'm going to go back to Classroom and, and recreate that assignment. What I did was, uh, here I am logged in as teacher, I clicked on assignment and I put in um, the name of the assignment, about us slide. And then I give the directions, you know, fill it out, do this, do that. Then you can pick a due date of whatever time you want. I wouldn't worry too much about it if you're just using it as a tool because it will mark the assignment late, but it doesn't prevent kids from passing it in. So it's very user friendly. Um, and you can be strict about it and have those timestamps or just be like, I'm just using it as a way to collect work. You can even add a time. Three p.m. no later, or else. And then you click on assign, but the problem is here, there's nothing going out to the student. Nothing. Until you send something out to the student. So that's when you have to start in Drive. Before I did that, in my Google Drive, in my classroom folder, I created the template. So whatever you want to send out to all your students, in Drive, 
in your class, I go to the classroom folder. Now, some people say, well, I have a whole folder with the templates that I used last year. Do I have to move them? And the answer is no. But in this folder, what I did was, I created a template called About Us, About Me, A Caterpillar. I have all these docs in here. So I'm like, okay, this is what I want each student to get. I just wanted to get a slide that has the bullets and the place to put the stuff. Another tip for you is to, instead of teaching all your lessons, put together like a slideshow and send it out to them with web links and questions for them to answer about your unit. So instead of you teaching the unit, have them be busy creating presentations throughout the class period and then pull it together and have them present. All right. So here it is, and in my classroom, I have now, just all I have to do is click on Drive and find what I want my students to have a copy of. And you can go ahead and, and you can just click and find it, or you can search for it by name. And once I find what I want, I click on Add. Now this is really important. Over here, by default, students get to view the file. And this is the number one mistake that teachers make the first time around. They really want students each to have their own individual copy, but they forget that by default, students are going to get a view only. And that's hardly ever what you want. What you want most of the time, 99% of the time, is make a copy for each student. It will make a copy, name it properly, and share it with the right people. And so what you can see is that when I click on make a copy for each student and I assign it, it did just that. It made a copy for each student. Now I'm logged in as teacher. I'm going to cancel because I've already done that. But I'm going to go to that assignment here. About me. Uh, Ten done. Wow. Students are very motivated when they see other students work. <laughs> Notice that. The, the, the drop in rate goes way up. All right, so down here, I have done, 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 done. Is this the right thing? Yep. And then here's the folder. So if I click on the folder for this assignment, da, 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 da. each individual slide has been created. And I can go ahead and open and look and give individual feedback to that student on that. But then we've also created a collaborative slideshow by pushing out the edit by all. So they each still have their original slide, but now the collaborative slideshow has everyone's contribution. So if as a teacher I want to give feedback, I can just go ahead and open it up. And yeah. Carolyn, you passed in a, an empty paper. That happens all the time. Thank you. No, thank you for passing it in. I always say, oh, I think you need more detail here. So you can see that all these have been passed in. And that's what happens is I have in my classroom folder, remember classroom's the parent, my course is here, and then any assignment I create, a folder is created that collects all those assignments for me. I want to draw your attention to, because I know we're going to run short on time, I have more to share all the time than I know I'm ever going to get through. I apologize for that. Um, but I'm going to go down below because I want to show you probably, um, I'm going to skip over the caterpillar drawing, but I want to let you know that they're never too young to use Google tools and a really great way to get uh, kinders and younger kids going with Google Apps is to have them use Google Draw. And I'm just, I'm just going to show you this briefly uh, here. That this I did up in Barbara with Jimmy Emery with her kindergarten kids this past fall. And this is brilliant because what it, there's so much that goes into it. And it's a simple little uh, a drawing. So if I open it up, what, and Jimmy actually drew this. What it is is it's the cat, they're studying caterpillars, right? But they're also studying patterns in that. So we bring them in and they get in the Google Draw. And they're, they build the pattern. So they learn how to do things. They're using a mouse. They're clicking on this. They're learning how to add a fill color. And then now, now the, the, uh, the challenge is pattern. So what you're looking at happening here, and they needed help. And not too much, 
but enough that you know that they're being challenged, they're being stretched. I mean, these kids didn't just sit down and go, Did, oh yeah, pattern, got it. They didn't understand pattern, but they did after. And so uh, she actually had another picture below as well. So it was just a really powerful uh, experience. And you can do a lot with a Google Draw when it's done. You can download it as a JPEG. You can, um, in, you can insert it in a presentation and make a whole slideshow of everyone's caterpillars. So there's just a lot of things you can do. All right, but I want to get to this. This is the paperless research process. Google Classroom has made this better and easier. So this is partially Google Classroom, partially uh, just taking advantage of the Google tools. So in this sense, I have um, in my classroom folder, I have the paperless research process folder ready to go, and I see people have already gotten started on it. And I pushed out this doc here, CMT Volcano Research. And it can be as simple as, you can use uh, Google's research tools for extensive research. My son just wrote his first college paper using Google Docs, the research tool, easy bit add-on, did all his APA citations for him. It was just, it's amazing what Google has done for, for us. So what I've done here is I've put the directions in the doc. Okay, use the research tool, find out facts about the volcano, add an image, da 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 da. And you can tell your kids, get rid of the instructions as you get the job done. So you have one doc. And here, I'm going to go in as a student so you can see what it looks like for them because the doc has the turn it in button. So if Shirley, you guys are chatting away there. I have to mute you all. Passing in, passing in blank work, but time enough to chat. All right, so here this is. I'm Shirley, I'm going to open up my doc, and I'm going to turn it in just to show you how this works. I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips for using this with students right off the bat if you want to just get everyone fired up about the collaboration and the feedback factor. Now, uh, for those of you who have opened the doc, can you uh, stay in the doc if you're there? <laughs> And it's very, it's very difficult. It's probably, it's highly unlikely we're going to see like a parent portal to classroom because it's for fun. But what, um, what I've done uh, as a parent of a virtual student is I just log into courses. This hit they use Moodle, but I just log in and every everything I need is there. Yeah, yeah. And all of my parents uh, of my virtual students do the same thing. They have this the grade book, but if they really want to see the meat and potatoes, they just log in with their son or daughter's login. Because we're all maintaining websites. Yeah. So like I don't want to do like you don't, a website and Right, 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 right. So they would you would just tell them log in with your son or daughter's credentials. Okay. They're their guardian, you know. And right. plus this makes more sense. Okay. Um so you can right. see see here, if I open this up as as the student, the minute it, you open it up, the minute they open it, it is the doc is created and shared with the teacher. And so now I can get working on it. And up here, it's a little bit slow. You should see the turn it in button. Now, I, I made note earlier that that button didn't exist on the slides, and it doesn't show up on the sheets. So if they need to turn in a doc, they have to go to classroom and then retrieve it from their drive. But all the docs, have the turn it in button. I'm going to go in as a teacher so you can see this is my favorite moment in using Classroom is, um, and I'll reference Bartlett again because I had the best time with the teachers there. Um, I taught the third and fourth grade teachers how to use Classroom in the morning to set up a class because they weren't using Drive that much and um, and when they got in and the, and the kids were in the dock and, and they were giving feedback, uh, that was my, one of my favorite, favorite moments using Google. Um, never mind using classroom. So as a teacher, go back to classroom. If I go into the folder, 
And this will tie into one tip I have for you on a Chrome extension as well. If you're working on a long-term research project with kids and writing a paper over a period of time, I would use something like Tab Cloud. I would open up all the docs the day that first day, get them all opened in a tab set, and then save the tab set. So anytime you want to look at an informative assessment, you just go back and open up those tabs. Let me demo what that means. Um, so I'm going to pull this tab right here. Uh, Chrome is pulled, pulled for, uh, tab browsing. So I'm going to pull this tab out. I did that because I'm going to make a set of tabs. I open up Nona, Dakota, Vicky, Rory. So I won't open them all up. I just wanted to let you know. Open them all, all 20 kids. So now they're all working. And while they're working in the classroom, I'm just going to hop doc to doc and give me that. Immediately. So get them in, get them writing, and then immediately make a comment. They're like, who's in my doc? What's going on? And the little whistle was The first time it happens, it's just like Christmas morning. It is so magical. Um, it's fun. So I can give feedback. And here is a, an app extension. It's called Tab Cloud. So uh, even with those third graders, they were going to work on that writing prompt for a week or, or maybe longer. So I had the teacher install this extension, and then she saves the set of open docs as, those are here, slow. We did pretty good with all you guys in the classroom and doing all this today. I mean, on the internet, the internet cooperated quite well. Name the set, and then anytime she wants those, she just clicks on it and they open up. So that just makes it so much better. <laughs> so I'll call this research volcanoes. Volcanoes, and then I hit save, and there it is. Now, teachers, I, I set up my lessons and my presentations and where, wherever I'm going, in sometimes weeks in advance, and while all the tabs are up, I just save the tab set. So if you have like a series of tabs that you always use for the same lesson plan, you can use something like Tab Cloud. You can see here, if I go down, there's like a whole set of things. So if I uh, suddenly realize I have to do a, a slide session, I go, oh, I'll just grab that. Those tabs will open up. So that's just a sidebar tip. And the reason I, now, I hope you understand why I call this not how to use Google Classroom, is because you guys can all figure out Google Classroom. Google Classroom was built to be easy. I wanted to show you it. Ooh, ooh, look at this. See how fast the research process works with Google Tools. Somebody here is very clever. And we have this great thing uh, up here under Tools, the research tool. But there's another great thing I just want to make you aware of, this add-on called, it's the EasyVib add-on. So if you go to add-ons and you add the EasyVib add-on, I know we're out of time, but you, all that you do is you put the ISBN number or the website, and you can create your work cited and hit add to doc. I can't tell you how much time that will save you. And you can choose APA or MLA. Easy bib add on. Yeah. Uh, I have it on here. Let me see. It should be right here. Add ons. I have a lot of add ons, but the internet's slow. So, well, I'm also just challenging you. I'm also, if I could break Google, if anyone could break Google, it would be me. All right, so there it is. So now when I click on Manage Bibliography, I'll tell you, kids that struggle with re research and writing, this is a lifesaver. So they just take the link to what their source was. So if I have a, I'll just find a random link. Oh yeah, we use that one. So if I was doing a paper on the benefits of healthy living and exercise, and I used information from here, I can copy this link, and it works for books as well. Um, click on website, paste it in, click on search, it searches for it, then you hit select, and then search for first, and then it should show up there. And then add bibliography. So you can add to it 
and just add, once, once all your stuff's there, you just click on Add Bibliography to Doc, and then your works cited will appear. So I wanted to show you that, like, I think it's more important for you to see, like, all of these little tools that just have me show you, here's how you log into the classroom, because trust me, that's the easy part. Um, coming up with some of these tips and tricks for making the classroom unit work better for you is more valuable. So there you have the APA and the MLA option as well. Don't discount um, many more opportunities that might be available with add-ons, with both sheets and uh, docs. You can see I have a few here. One that I love, I rarely use it, but like the state of New Hampshire to get your like business license or something. Oh, you have to fax, like fax. Can I email it? No, no, you gotta fax it within 24 hours. Guess what? Hello Fax is an add-on, and I can fax for free from Google Docs. I love it. I rarely use it. I rarely use it, but if somebody insists I have to fax, I'm glad it's there. Uh, so don't discount the add-ons. And finally, before you go, and I know you have to go, and if you have to run out because I'm talking, go ahead and do it. Uh, I didn't get to this part, but group work, this is a miracle saver. It's called Doctopus, and the links are all here on my, on my site. But what Doctopus does, is a, it's different from Classroom, it's a spreadsheet tool, but you can, it's an add-on. And what you can do is you can set up group work. So as a virtual teacher, we have collaborations where students come into the classroom and then, okay, you three, you three, you three, you three, I put them in different virtual rooms and they work on a doc. So I just use Doctopus and it's like the doc's already shared, nobody has to make it and share it. And there isn't a good group assigning tool in classroom, so I use Doctopus. But Doctopus will grab an assignment from your classroom and group it out for you. And that's just a whole another session in itself. But I wanted to let you know it was there. And, um, and there's another tool I use called Site Maestro because uh, I use port sites for portfolios for students. So um, I create a template for a site for the portfolio. And then using a spreadsheet tool with a student's name and email, I press send. And they each get a copy of the website named the way it needs to be named, shared with me or whoever else it needs to be shared with, and categorized in the domain. So that's called Site Maestro. So if you're techie, geeky, and you get what I'm, I'm saying right now, all the resources you need are there. Um, thank you for staying late. I am Allison Malico. You can find me online. Uh, you can send me an email if you have any questions or follow-up. And my best suggestion to you is just, if you don't know the answer, Google it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, what? Do you have that? Um,